Beyond the Digital Divide, a film by Anna Larkin featuring James Griffiths. Digital technology has opened up a whole new way of experiencing the world. But what happens if you're blind? I first met James Griffiths when he was about to chair a disability advocacy meeting. I knew James was blind, but in my ignorance, I wondered why he had an iPhone, which is such a visual thing for me now, and how he was going to follow the agenda. Was someone going to read him the agenda items or had he memorised the agenda by heart? Once James had confidently run the meeting using his iPhone to speak the agenda, I realised that what I had been seeing was James's disability, his blindness, what I thought of as his limitations. I wasn't really seeing James at all. James first became blind gradually as an adult after a hemorrhage behind his eyes. I asked him what it was like when he first became blind. When I first went blind to before I discovered the internet, I was always asking friends and family, what is this? Can you search for this? And I felt like I was very dependent on them for answers, where now I have my independence. When I first got my iPhone, I didn't know how to use it because being a flat screen and, no, and not having tactile, um, I had to do a lot of playing with it to see how it worked. And being a curious person, I just had to work it out. I asked James to show me how he used his device to read the meeting agenda. I read the minutes by using the accessible function on the phone. It's a function called VoiceOver, which has been built into the Apple iPhone in the general settings, in the settings of accessibility. When I swipe left or mm. swipe right, it'll go down the page. So going Sorry. down. The 201, eight, moved. Rachel, Smith, seconded, really. So from there on, when I'm going down my minutes, Form controls. I can go characters. Individual characters. Words. Through words. Lines. Through lines. Eileen Berry. Speaking rate. Turn the voice up and down as fast as I want to run the meeting. So going down. Four, four, thirty-five percent. Four, four, sixty-five percent. Speed the voice up. Four headings. The heading of the email. So when doing this, it just makes uh, navigating the device a lot quicker and a lot easier. James has used his growing knowledge of digital technology to move from feeling isolated and dependent as a blind person to where he lives a full and active life, using digital devices to help him navigate and connect with the world. Digital media has changed my life in so many ways. So with Facebook, been able to keep in contact with friends and family and up to date with current news. Um, with eBay, been able to do shopping independently and find what new products are in the world and around in my local area. Um, doing web searches, finding the temperatures. You know, is it going to be wet today? When I go to Melbourne, is it going to be raining in Melbourne? Living three hours away, you've got to be very well prepared. So it's just every day-to-day -day life that people take for granted, I use it every day just to more or less survive in our changing world. Vincente and Lopez note that people living with a disability are poorly represented in digital usage. The traditional ideas of this digital divide is that it is lack of economic and physical access to technology which prevents people from using it. Vincente and Lopez argue that the digital divide is much more complex and multidimensional. They do mention socioeconomic factors, but they also talk about poorly designed software and devices and the attitude of people living with a disability to digital technology. I think the reason other vision impaired people don't adopt the accessible technology is one, it's just they're afraid. 
So being vision impaired, not knowing that you've got a screen with that's flat, how do you use it? And not having to do this before, it's a scary and daunting, daunting task. But once you get used to the swipes, the taps, the double taps, and things like that, it'll become second nature. Of course, price is a factor as well. I've found that when it comes to anything to do with accessibility or disability, as soon as it's got that DIS in front of it, the price goes up tenfold. Being pensioners or being low income earners, then to be honest, the accessibility is there if you've got the cash. This led me to wonder what would James dream of the future be if price were not in his way? If I could wish for anything in the future, I'd be wishing for a fully automated house and a car. So that way then, when I wanted to come and go, I could walk in, lights on, lights off, TV on, TV off, ask my house, have I had anybody come to my front door? Who was it? What time did they come? Or if I wanted to go somewhere, jump in my car and say, okay, I want to go to Safeway, get driven to Safeway, pull up in the car park, ask it, okay, what direction to Safeway, where the door is, how far, how many metres, and that way then I've got a good idea on which way I've got to go, how far I've got to go, what surfaces or things are around in my built environment, so I can do that independently and safely. James's dreams of a digital future are not that far away, but the price tag is way out of his reach. In the meantime, he conquers the digital divide by using the resources, the ingenuity and the courage he has available to him. Credits. Vincente and Lopez, a multi-dimensional analysis of the disability digital divide, 2010. Footage. Girl on a phone cutaway 2 by Vidivo. Music. Sawtooth Sally by the Cornbread Mountain Boys. With special thanks to James Griffiths for his honesty and time. A film by Anna Larkin, September 2018. So doing web searches, what is the current temperature? What?